Are you desperately looking to move on to DevOps career and don't know where to start? Then this video helps you. Welcome to Veloxi Technologies. My name is J.R. Shankar. In this video, you are going to see where can you start your DevOps journey. To understand this concept, first let's understand what developers do and how his system looks like. To demonstrate this concept very clearly, I have configured my laptop as a developer system. As you know, there are different kind of programming languages. In this example, just to treat me, I am a Java developer. If that is the case, I am going to install these packages or softwares on my system. Whenever it comes to the programming languages, Java, build tool, to build Java, we use Maven, application server, Tomcat, IDE editor, nothing but where can I write my program, that is Eclipse. So these are the minimum softwares or packages I install on my system. If he is a .NET developer, that is the case, programming software, that is .NET, build tool, MS build, application server, IIS, IDE editor, Visual Studio. So this is for .NET developers. Like this, they can change these tools depends upon on which language are they working. But as I said, just to think that I am a Java developer. So these packages I have already installed on my system. Let me go and show you. Okay, this is my laptop and I have already installed these packages. If you see the packages, I have installed Eclipse. Eclipse is a IDE which helps us to develop Java code. Once code is developed, we need to compile it. Compile nothing but we are converting the source code into the system understandable language. To compile, we are going to use Maven for Java language. So once compilation is done, I am going to deploy it just to make sure that my application is working fine or not. To deploy, I have already installed Tomcat on my system that is Tomcat 9. And if you see the versions, I am using version 3.6.3 for Maven and Tomcat 9. Okay, just to remember, we are going to discuss about this in the later point of this video. So let's go and open IDE. And these all packages are not required for your case. Just to demonstrate, I am using this one. And workspace, if you see, C projects workspace. Nothing but this is projects. And here we have a workspace. This is where it is going to store our packages or source code. So let's go back again. So you can see here, I am keeping it in the same location. Let it keep and launch. My IDE is getting opened. Okay, it's ready. This is welcome page. Close it. So this is how it looks like. Here project explorer, it lists out all the projects, whatever you have imported or created on the Eclipse IDE. I have already two projects over here. I'm going to create a new project that is Maven project because I'm going to use Maven to build our code. For that, go to file, new option and Maven project. Seems font is small. I could not able to increase the font size. Hope you can understand. So I'm just going with the default options. Next. Here you need to choose a archetype. Archetype nothing but a template which can be helpful for us to import some predefined definitions on Java. If you don't know, just ignore it. In this case, I'm going to build a project called web app. Okay. So you need to choose web app. There is a predefined template for web app. Web app is helpful for us to access this application from the browser whenever we deploy on Tomcat. So I'm just taking this one next. And here we need to give the group ID, artifact ID version. These all are required in case if we are building a Maven project. That is default behavior. Anyway, this all I have explained in my complete DevOps course. If, if you are interested, I'm going to show you how can you enroll for those self-learning videos at the end of this video with a coupon code. Anyway, so here artifact ID, I'm giving hello world. That's it and finish. Now you can see here project explorer. Yep, a new project has been created. And if I explore this one, you can see multiple directories has been created. These all are not created by me. As I said, this is a template. It used the template and create this directory structure. And if you see the palm.xml, okay, you just need to open and the content get opens in this panel. So you can see whatever information you have given in dot galaxy, hello world, all this will be there. This is helpful to build our project. That's it. And same content you can see under your directory as well. 
so you can see workspace earlier there is no hello world now it's got created and if i go inside there are multiple files under directories okay same whatever you could see from here next i'm going to target because here we have only one directory once we build this one you can see few additional directories over here to build it it's quite simple so just right click and run as okay maven install so this you need to run and these options are showing because i have already configured my ide maven java all these are already configured that's why it is going to work fine for me in your case it may not work and you need to do proper configurations all right now build is successful and if you see under target apart from this you can see hello world and hello world dot where file is there this is the where file which we call it as a artifact from the source code it is going to create a artifact this artifact we are going to deploy on a target system so to deploy it we have a server we have already configured our tomcat server and the tomcat server also available under projects okay here we have a tomcat under tomcat there is a web apps in this directory we need to copy so i'm going to open new explorer so this is the project and uh, workspace and uh, hello world under this we have a hello world dot where just drag and drop over here that's it now what i have done i have copied my artifact onto a tomcat server and let me access my tomcat server for that local host 8080 why because it is running on my local system and the tomcat version is 9.0 and slash hello world we should give how do i know this is quite simple whatever artifact name you have same thing you need to give in the url here our artifact name is hello world right so same thing we need to give over here that's it now i have able to build and deploy this application on my local laptop but whenever you deploy on the server the story may be differ before discussing about the actual environment let's go and do few changes so changes what i am doing under src there is a main under main we have a web app under this index.jsp okay this is the file which helps us to display the content here hello world is there that's the reason we could see hello world over here now i am going to change this one to hello world to hello galaxy okay now save this file once it is saved again we need to compile it like this how many times you are changing your code every time you need to compile it okay maven install now it is going to compile build is successful again i need to copy so now new var file has been created this is world var file and a new var file is available over here and the time if you see 11 12 earlier one was 11 7 okay now drag and drop this one again sorry okay replace the file in the destination yes i want to change it now if i access my application again okay this is not uh, deployed properly i know the reason because we need to clean the packages first then again we need to build it so i'm going to first run maven clean okay then again install why because if we don't do maven clean it is going to take the previous examples itself now let's go back again this is 11 13 now and i'm going to delete this one and again deploy it so i have deployed it now let me access this one now you can see hello galaxy it means that my code is working fine but as a developer this is my own perspective but whenever it move on to the production or target environment story may be differ why story may be differ because the versions what do we use here and what on production system we use may be differ assume that in my local system i am using java 1.9 but on target system or production system it could be 1.8 most of the cases on production it could be lower version because we cannot update more frequently on production systems 
as we do on the test systems or on our local systems because these these are not used by clients right so we usually have updated packages on our local systems whenever it goes to the production it may cause for the issues and another example i'm using tomcat 9 right if you see here i'm using tomcat 9 maybe production running with tomcat 8 so i have written my code with the latest features which can work on tomcat 9 but whenever it goes to the production it may not work another problem is i'm working with the group of people means apart from my code i need to integrate my code with the other group members or team members who is working on the same project once it is combined i don't know whether it works or not and if it is combining with the other people and building on our local system may not be possible because it may require additional packages or softwares to build their code and they may build on their own perspective i can build on my own perspective like this there are so many gaps just to tell you again from the developer system we are copying the code onto the server developing the application code as a developer i don't have any issue and i have tested on my local laptop it's working fine and if once it goes to the server it may or may not work if it is working well and good if it is not working anyway ops team doesn't take ownership why because the problem could be with the application at the same time developer says that it's worked on my local system because i have built and deployed it on my local system i don't know why it is not working on target system problems may be with the packages which we have installed on the production system or else the code which is developed by the other developers now let's see the what are the problems which are not answered by the development team or operations team so first problem is what if more than one developer is working on the same project with me few more people are working on the same project who will combine this code and who will maintain this code who builds this code so if i am working with other developers i feel that i have written correct code and somebody has written the wrong code if i go and say that okay you have written wrong code it doesn't looks good right so who will take that kind of blame who will take responsibility in case of it's failed as i said i feel that i have written a right code my other colleague thinks that he has written right code whenever we combines both that is where actual problem occurs in this case who will take the responsibility whenever the build fails then who will deploy this code once it is successful then i want to deploy it who will take care of the deployment of this code then who will take care of the prerequisites on the target system if i am deploying my java project it requires the java and a build tool or maybe some prerequisites to get all the packages like third party packages i am using then who maintain the code we need to maintain the code and we need to make sure that in case latest version of code is not working previous version should be deployed who will maintain this and who can fix the runtime issues nothing but sometimes it may require additional resources like memory cpu or else updates who will take care of all this stuff this is where actual problems comes into the picture and which is not answered that is where devops engineer comes into the picture so he will take care of all this stuff in the automation way not the manual way if you see as a developer all are sitting on one system i can easily build it and deploy it with less efforts whereas if it comes to the production systems each are running on different systems and it is quite headache and problematic to take care of all these activities the devops engineer role is quite simple he has to take the developer's code build it and deploy on the target system but by using automation you should not do it manually you should do it with automation now how do you do it with automation it is quite simple in previous slide we have seen the problems right we need to replace those problems with the tools so if i take the tools okay we need a scm tool scm tool will help us to maintain the developer's code as versions and also it maintains who has changed what code then it is easy for us to identify who is created problem and who is going to take the responsibility in case build failed so that problem is avoided next compilation tool we are going to use a compilation tool so there is no problem with the who compiles the code which has given by multiple developers so this is also addressed next integration tool 
integration tool is kind of a master tool which integrates all these tools okay deployment tool so i am going to deploy by using deployment tool so deployment problem also resolved next infrastructure i am going to provision whatever servers are required to deploy this code and also i am going to maintain this infrastructure or else i will assist ops team to maintain this infrastructure next monitoring tools i am going to monitor the server to fix the runtime issues or health of the servers in case the problem with the operation side i will intimate to operations team or else i can able to handle if it is under my control but if it is a application related issues then i will update to the developers that okay where exactly the problem is this is how the devops engineer helps developers and operations team to deliver the code onto the production smoothly now i just given the abstraction or overview of the tools which you can use in this case but what exact tools can i use to implement the automation so i have given some of the devops tools which are used by most of the industry that is on source code management tool git compilation tool maven integration tool jenkins deployment tool ansible infrastructure cloud and microservices whenever it comes to the microservices docker and kubernetes i just kept kubernetes but whenever it comes to the cloud aws azure monitoring tool prometheus so these are the tools we can start learning to jump into the devops career and one more thing if you are new to the linux or unix platform you need to start with the linux if you don't know where to learn and which level you need to learn linux don't worry i have created a dedicated course that is velaxi.thinkfic.com here i have created a dedicated course called linux for cloud and devops engineers it is especially useful for the people who want to learn cloud and devops so this is four hours course i just discussed what commands are what services we use on our cloud and devops side this is available for free next to few more days so enroll for this course as soon as possible if you don't know linux but if you know already linux and if you want to start with the devops then i have discussed all the tools which i just shown you in the slide so all those tools are discussed over here and prepared a complete devops course if you want to enroll this course this is available for 49.99 dollars i'm going to give 30 percent discount coupon code in a while so if you don't know linux please start with this course to jump on to devops career if you already know the linux then just think that there is a code in the developer system and you would like to deploy this on the target system in the automation way maybe you can create a amazon linux system and uh, deploy this code with automation not with the manual steps if you do that activity i can say that you started your devops journey so as a devops engineer what do you need to think is how can you automate the process of build test deployment of a developer code all right and one last thing as i said if you want to enroll for my course where i have discussed all this stuff so use the coupon code called new user and if you are facing any problem while enrolling to this course you can contact on whatsapp over this number we will help you one last thing if you have any questions you can join in our facebook group and if you are new to our youtube channel please go through with our previous content if you like our content consider to subscribe to our youtube channel thanks for watching until next time